Hour two overdrive continues, brought to you by FanDuel, bringing you everything from the opening line to the final score. We got Brad Tree Living coming up, the new GM of the Maple Leafs, in about a half an hour. We've had Brad on many times when he was out in Calgary, and now he steps in here for the first time as, as the GM of the Leafs, and you know, we'll ask him about the whole process. And he, he mentioned today, first thing he's going to do, fly down to Arizona, right? Or one of the first things he'll do, fly down to Arizona, catch up with Matthews. I'm sure he's going to catch up with Sheldon Keefe. And um, the weird thing is, though, based on, you know, his contract had not expired officially in Calgary, he can't be on the draft floor right. at the draft. So – what? Yeah, like he's can he pull well, up Bobby Valentine here, throw a stash on, and just be walking around? How do we get? How do, how do the Leafs get? Trey but can he in the be building? on the first row of the seats? I'm not sure what the ruling is in terms of him physically being in the well, building. He can't be Dude, a part of the draft. Gotta change. That's no, got to change, man. But think about it though. He's all year he's been helping the Calgary Flames prepare for their draft. All of a sudden, you go to a new organization just before the draft. You're going to know what the thought process is of that team. So, you know, it, it, it's a... But he knows it I, anyway. I, like, he could tell them all the way up to the actual start of the draft and then say, all right, there's all my knowledge. See you guys. And, right. like, I hear what you're saying, and I think it's about optics. And I understand if Calgary... Calgary would be sensitive to that. But are sure. the least demanding that out of Dubas? Like, why is... why? I haven't heard anything that Dubas isn't allowed. But wasn't Dubas terminated? Where I don't, I think Brad. His deal Trilling, was up. Yeah, his deal was up. It but wasn't I, but here, here's the thing: your deal is up. I'm not sure when Kyle Dubas's contract ended. It might have been June first. Brad Tree Living's contract might be July first. My understanding so was Pittsburgh had to get permission to speak with Dubas, and it was right, granted because technically Dubas would have been paid if it's June first up until today. So you're still on the payroll for another organization. That's What's the why difference? You, well, the, 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 the difference the, the, is he's collecting check, a check from. But that, that makes no difference in terms of the knowledge of the draft. Uh, like it, if the whole thing is Tree Living can't be there because he knows the plans of the Flames. Dubas knows the plans of the Leafs. Right. What's the difference? I, I, listen, yeah, imagine they not, made a selection and Bobby McKenzie said he stole that pick from the right. Flames. <laughs> for me, for I, me, I, it's it's both. Who cares? You know, move on. Let Tree Living sit with the Leafs. Let Dubas sit with Pet. You know, right. whatever. But I, I, I don't know the answer. Maybe, maybe right. Dubas is not allowed. To, to sit there with Pittsburgh. We should look that up. We'll try to find Dude, that Dude, my thing is the likelihood of something, like, happening where you're like, wow, that is just so fishy. I don't trust that. It's like, give me a break, no. man. Well, of course it, not. Listen, if someone I, can explain to me the idea of something happening that could be so kind of against the code or, like, the reason for it, then go ahead and tell me, and I'll say, yeah, that, well, that's why All, all I'm it. saying is there did, – did you read Barry Trotz's comments to his scouts? Did you see yes. that where Barry go Trotz was players. Like, go find me. I can find third and fourth line sure. players. Go find me. So maybe it's a scenario where in these scouting meetings they've coveted somebody who's been injured and, you know, has, isn't really on the radar, isn't projected to be a first or second rounder, but – might be based on their talent, but has been hurt. And Calgary, or maybe Tree and his group, loved them. And Calgary is going to take him a little higher. And and Tree gets here and goes, yeah, this guy. He, he can still take do that, that though. Noodles. Uh, but, he could call but, up West Clark right now and say, hey, there's a guy. He's hurt. I won't be on the floor, but take him. <laughs> like that's my West you're Clark. Right. You're, West runs the, head the of, scouting operation the head of the scouts. Here in Yes. Yes, I, I understand. <laughs> oh, no. I just thought you made, made up a name. Well, yeah. well, he runs the yeah. show. No, so, he, he and Dubas are very close. But I, it, I'm it curious would, what happens. I knew that. But, knew but that, again, Dubas being terminated, I do believe they still would have to work something out. Pittsburgh for him to be there. It's same thing with Brad Tree living like that. That's the agreement. Hey, you're I, I we're going to poach your guy and and well, not poach. It's not a poach. The right word. Tree living in the flames, and, you know, kind of separated. And I, I but, hear what you're saying. And again, I think it's the optics. My point is that's all it is. Right. It's not, but Tree living can sit there with the scouts every day between now and the, as far as I know, he can't. He doesn't recuse himself. Right. Is that the case? We can ask him in half an hour. I, I want clarity on this. Do you have to recuse yourself from the word draft? If the draft comes up, do you have to say, sorry, guys, I have to leave? Or can he be involved in every single chat until 
Bettman steps up and goes, you know, welcome to Nashville. Then he's got to leave. If so, what the hell's the point of leaving? And can he text in? So can he call stupid. in and well, be like, guys, I, I'm not physically here, but take this guy. Dude, with I need these GMs <laughs> sitting on the sitting on the boards on the sidelines, just being like, hey, what's going on? It, it's just, I need it. I need I them to be I, on the perimeter. I need a Bobby Valentine. Bobby I think Tree Living. That's what it is. <laughs> Bobby yeah, Tree We need living. somebody to dress up as our buddy from the NHL, just Hawaiian shirt and mustache, and just get after it down there. Right. Yeah. Right. I, I just, I mean, that that's my point. I'll give you an example. I, and it's it's a poor example. When I was let go by the Flames and offered a different job, and the quiz master called me the next day and said, would you like to try TV? I had to get permission from Calgary because I was still being paid until July 1st by the Calgary Flames. So I, I had to get permission that, to do that. But then so I, why stop at the draft then if you're Calgary? Like, is he allowed to fly and meet Matthews? Or is he still working for the Flames? Right, exactly. No, he's not working for None the Flames. None of it. He shouldn't be allowed any of it. That's but stupid. I think the draft is actually like that is competition, direct competition, you know, picks as opposed to your own player in your own organization. He's not flying to meet Michael Backlund. You know, he's fly, <laughs> flying to meet Austin Matthews, right. you know. Like well, I, I understand that, but it, it 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 is. I think it's just. I don't think it's optics. It's actual like, hey, your contract is done at this time. We're paying you until this time. Are they? We don't want you doing. Are we still paying them, or are the Leafs paying them now? No idea. I'm not. I'm not privy to the contract. What I'm saying is, I'm talking from my personal standpoint. Yes. I was being paid till July 1st. I believe Kyle Dubas's contract probably was June 1st or uh, July 1st. One right. of most contracts end at the end of the you the know season, hockey which season, is June yeah. 30th. And then July right. won the new season. So I, I think it's more the semantics. I understand what you're saying. Exactly. And maybe it's ridiculous, it but it's goofy. still it's still the the rules. You I, know? I understand. And that's why he won't be there. I, yeah. I understand it. And Calgary had the right to say, if we're going to give you permission, because that was a, a report, right? Early on was they're not allowing him to talk to anybody. Right. And then all of right. a sudden it was, okay, he is allowed to talk to people, but can't be on the draft floor. Okay. Just <laughs> to me, it's so goofy. This yeah. idea that Tree Living can be involved with every chat. He could probably still call in or text in, but he can't be on the floor. Can't yeah. have him on the floor because Calgary the just can't. I can't accept what about it. A, can't a, it. What about a constant FaceTime? And he's probably going to be doing a FaceTime right. at the table. Imagine he's up yeah. and taking a pick with the draftee. He's on a FaceTime. <laughs> It's like <laughs> everyone's got, like got a, their shoulders <laughs> over. They got a, yeah. a cut, like a you put a body double up there with a yeah. FaceTime. Oh, no, the robot, space. the robot with the monitor head. Yeah, yes. it's, just, it's just him. Here's uh, robot tree living is yeah. making his way up to the podium it, it, to make the pick. I don't know. I'm just speaking. And, from and when my they get up there, do they experience. say we want to thank our our, our you know our, all of our fans back in Toronto and our GM Brad Tree Living, <laughs> who's down the street at the hotel? <laughs> We're thinking of you. <laughs> That's what I want to see happen. I, yeah, I mean, we might have to ask him. Like, I don't want to. I, I just I that's my experience. I I, I get it, and that's just, what's happened weird. here. Calgary had the right to do that, right? But I I would believe, I have to believe, if Dubas's deal ends on June thirtieth, the Leafs would have the right to do that to him and Pitt, and and I haven't seen anything reported on that front. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, again, it, and I don't think they should personal. let him go do his thing. <laughs> let Tree Living go do his thing. Get over it. He's not in Calgary anymore. I I it's get goofy. it. Well, it it's just, a Toronto it, thing. It's a Toronto bias. That's my guess. You think it is? It's a Calgary Toronto saying, bias. Calgary we're not letting you. We're not letting you go to Toronto, and I sit on that it. on that draft floor with your <laughs> leaf pin. No way. Not gonna happen. Yeah. Um, all right. So Brad Tree living in, in about twenty. Jay's with a big one today. You see that catch by Kiermaier in the second? Yeah. What <sighs> a catch! Like this dude. He had that surgery, you know, last summer, late last season. And remember, we had him on, and he was still rehabbing. Like, he was still making his way back. But he was convincing us and the world. He's like, I'm going to be back, and I'm still going to be a machine. Like, I am going to be an absolute vacuum in center field. What a catch he made today. Gosman pitches another gem. The Jays with a win off to New York to, uh, to play the Mets starting tomorrow night. Joining us here on the Maple Toyota Hotline, here's our Blue Jay reporter, Scott Mitchell. You were down there at the park, Scotty. What was that catch like live, Kiermaier, to end the second? Yeah, it might have been the best catch I've ever seen, not going to lie. Um, it's always fun when guys climb walls, but nobody thought he was getting to that. And, um, you know, even I went and, I went and talked to KK after the game, and he was like, yeah, I'm surprised I even caught that. And 
you know, John Schneider said the, you know, kind of the, the reaction in the dugout was holy S. So yeah, that was, that was unbelievable. And, but two things, uh, you know, it's been a very, very savvy signing. Um, I think everyone questioned it at the time. And, you know, the, the question is still, can he stay healthy for the final four months? And, you know, he had the back thing the other day and, and really recovered from that uh, pretty quickly. So that's a good sign. But look, man, he's hitting over 300. He's slugging over 500. Uh, he looks 27 out there in center field. So, you know, ni- nice little uh, nice little move so far uh, for the Blue Jays. Scotty Hayes mentioned earlier in the show, he just said, I want like – you wonder where the Jays would be without Gosman. And it seems like a lot of the pitching staff, there's been crisis management. Uh, I, I think that's the only way you could basically describe it. And this guy's kind of, he's had his own little hiccups, but he's been a stud, hasn't he? Yeah, two, two blow-ups, two bad starts, and, you know, the other 10 have been pretty much dominant. I mean, this is uh, his fifth double-digit strikeout game today, and, you know, uh, one of his final pitches in the seventh inning there was 99, and that's the you know the hardest pitch he's thrown in six or seven years. So yeah, he was dialed in today, and you, you can tell from the beginning when his uh, just the action his footer gets and the types of swings that he's getting on it. Um, you know, you, you knew today was was going to be one of those high K days for him, and you know it's really today was a this win was a, a microcosm of, of the season. It's uh, you know the four guys that have really either met or exceeded expectations this year. You know, Bichette and, and Chapman. Uh, you know, with a much needed homer in that in that first inning, and then Gosman and Kiermaier defensively. Those are the four guys I think on this roster you can look at and say they either either met or exceeded expectations. And uh, you know, I'm not I'm not sure there's too many names uh, you know that would join them. We were talking last hour. Would you characterize Bichette maybe as their MVP so far, as as well as he's uh, hit and been very consistent? Absolutely. Um, you know, it's not just the Jays MVP. You can put this guy in uh, the league wide MVP talk at, at this point, you know, with the, the offensive numbers and, you know, quietly, uh, cause we never talk about it when it looks good for a stretch is, uh, you know, quietly the defense has been pretty solid. Cause you only talk about that when there's, uh, you know, glaring mistakes. And, you know, when you're not talking about Bo's defense, that means he's making the, uh, the routine plays and that's kind of what you ask of him. And yeah, he, he's been unbelievable. And, you know, without him, they'd be an under 500 team and, you know, kind of really swimming upstream for these final four months. With Scott Mitchell, our, our TSN Jays reporter, Jays getting past Milwaukee 3-1 earlier this afternoon. They take two or three against the Brewers off to New York playing the Mets tomorrow night. Um, Scotty's got something up on TSN.ca now that we've turned the page into June here, you know, looking back on, on May and, and throughout the early parts of the season, why maybe the Jays have underachieved. And number one on your list, and I think everyone would agree with this, is the regression of Alec Manoa. And last night, you know, felt like a, a tipping point, not the way he pitched, but I thought I thought his body language, um, I thought the way he was interacting with people in the dugout was strange last night. Like, it looked like he was trying to get someone to convince them that it was okay. And he was very vulnerable after the game. Schneider even alluded to that. Um, you're around this guy a lot. You know, it's it's tough, man. Like, is it, 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 he's wearing it right now, isn't he, Scotty? Like, he really looks like he's in a bad place. Yeah, no, uh, you, you kind of nailed it. I mean, this is a young kid getting baseballed right now. He's figuring out how tough this sport is after, you know, two seasons of, of kind of cruising to all-star games and, you know, playoff starts and opening day starts uh, without many hiccups. And the sport is a really hard sport to play. It's an absolute grind, um, you know, at the best of times for these guys. And, yeah, look, I've been noticing this for a while. I mean, his confidence and, and demeanor on the mound have completely changed. And it's, it's not just on the mound, too. It's, you know, in the clubhouse. You know, he's in the back corner, um, you know, where, uh, you know, some of the starting pitchers are. And it, just a completely different vibe back there this year than when he was dealing you know, for his entire career, just, uh, you know, much more open to, you know, conversation. You hear him much more in the clubhouse. He, he's going through right now and he doesn't have any answers. And, and that's the, the hard part for him and the Blue Jays because, you know, there's real, no real answer. And I kind of outlined it the other day in a column. Um, you know, it's a snowball effect. It starts with the velocity being down. He's down a full tick, you know, so that uh, has been evident since opening day and, and that hasn't changed really. Uh, you know, it's ebbed and flowed a little bit, but it just, the, there's really no signs of, of that stuff, that pure stuff coming back from last season at this point. So, you know, you talk about that and then, you know, he's lost his mechanics at times, which could be something to do with, with the velocity dropping as well. And then, you know, when he's getting hit and not having those 
his results. Now he's lost his confidence as well. So everything has just completely snowballed on him. And, you know, statistically, he's been one of the worst pitchers in the league. And look, man, I didn't have this on my bingo card. And, and you know, I'm the type of guy that knows anything can happen in baseball. And, you know, this is it's 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 a shock to, to anyone watching. And unfortunately, it's a shock to the Blue Jays right now because they don't have an answer. Scotty, instead of saying the old kind of Joe fan routine where it's like, Doc Halliday had to go down and fix his <laughs> stuff. Like, do you have any other kind of recent examples of a of a stud pitcher that just kind of lost their way? And and what did they do to get it back? I don't know. I can't personally think of any examples. But like, I guess the question is, what does this guy have to do to get his game back? Is it like I always wonder? What does the minors do? Like going down to AAA, what does that do for his mechanics, his overall play? Why facing those guys would be better than big league hitters? Like, I I just wonder what the solution is or what they're thinking the solution is. Yeah, every once in a while, though, you come up with a a genius question. And look, I mean, that's the, you know, there's so many things to unpack there. Um, You know, what do you mean once in a while? (laughs) Every once in a while. (laughs) He's right. Yeah, every once in a while. I mean, uh, yeah, I don't know if anyone's going to fight, you know, with regularity if I said that. But, you know, it's a a compliment. I think you should just take it. (laughs) Yeah, chew on that compliment. Uh, Go ahead. Good question. Um, Yeah, so, I mean, you know, the idea of of giving him a break in the minor leagues, it's just there's, you know, this game is such a results-oriented business. So you can go down there and look at the process more than the results because it doesn't matter. So that would be the idea there. and. You know, the, the holiday question is, is interesting because every time it's been brought up, you know, kind of around the ballpark, I say, yeah, you know, Roy Holiday did it. And, and there's not a lot of other examples. I think a, a real good one off the top of my head is Max Scherzer. I know he, he had to go down after coming up with Arizona early in his career. Uh, it wasn't for a long time, but it was kind of a similar situation a little bit with the command. He was walking a lot of guys. I know that. So, um, you know, it's just to kind of give them a mental break. And, and that's where I kind of sit right now wondering, you know, if they have to do something, which I would say, I don't know that on the verge would be the right way to describe it, but another dud or two, and, and you're going to have to kind of start looking at something. And, you know, it's no coincidence they've lined up uh, Bowden Francis in the minor leagues, who's probably their best option right now, which is not saying a lot if you had to replace uh, Manoa. So he's pitching on the same day uh, down in Buffalo right now, and that's no coincidence. So I, I don't know that the answer is the minors. I don't know that it's you know, just some sort of phantom IL stint. So if you send him to the minors, he's got to stay down for 10 days at least. Uh, if, you, if you IL him, he's got to be gone for 15. Um, you know, you can work in the bullpen here, again, away from the spotlight. Um, you know, if you ask me, I, I don't think uh, it's getting better until the stuff returns, until that he finds that tick of velo and is able to, you know, get his fastball back up over the major league average. And Along with it comes, you know, a little extra snap on the slider, a little extra confidence, things like that. Um, until I see that view of return and that stuff look as sharp as it did last year, um, you know, I don't know that it's just a confidence thing or a mechanics thing. So, <laughs> like I said, I don't think there's an answer. And with the Blue Jays not having, you know, ready-made rotation options, like, say, the Atlanta Braves or, you know, the L.A. Dodgers or something like that, uh, you just kind of roll him out there and, and hope he, uh, you know, can put together five plus and, and give you a chance to win right now. Scotty, what if it's a pitch clock issue? Then what? Well, then you gotta find a find a solution, and you know, there's obviously not a lot of easy ones in that scenario. And look, I mean, I, I've had people say to me too, you know, they they think he's he's out of shape, and and that's really kind of affecting his mechanics as well. When you combine that with the pitch clock, the faster pace, um, you know, I know people don't want to hear that in this day and age, but uh, you know, when he comes in looking a little bit different than he did last year, and the stuff is down, and he can't hold his mechanics, can't repeat his mechanics. Um, you know, I think everything's on the table right now, and yeah, you got to find that stuff. You got to find that that uh, repetition with the delivery again, and yeah, you got to figure out uh, you know how to deal with that pitch clock and up the pace. And I, I thought when he was at his best last year, he pitched with pace, he pitched with intent, and he kind of um, you know controlled that pace. And you definitely don't see that this year. And I don't think it's just the pitch, pitch clock, but like I said, it's a snowball effect of so many different things, and that's why they haven't been able to fix them for two months. Where are you at with Nate Pearson? Do you think he's uh, starting to round in and you know become a a reliable pitcher for them? 
Yeah, reliable is a good way to put it. He's kind of turning himself into that. And, you know, John Schneider kind of talked about it in his uh, pregame meeting with us today. He, he's definitely kind of, you know, sticking his nose into kind of that high, high leverage scenario right now with, uh, you know, Jimmy Garcia, Tim Meza, and obviously Jordan Romano and, and Eric Swanson. So, yeah, uh, he the command has looked good. The, the walks are down. Um, you know, I think he's kind of finding his comfort zone again against major league hitters. And, you know, that's uh, probably the most encouraging part of all this is, you know, he's been away for the, from the big leagues for so long. And to come in and, and you know, kind of work his way into, uh, you know, some later later inning scenarios, um, you know, this early on without too many command hiccups, that's a, a really good sign that he's going to, you know, really settle into this role. And, you know, kind of like we've all envisioned, um, you know, probably be a, a real dominant piece at, at the back end of the bullpen at some point. And, look, if it happens this summer down the stretch, um, you know, that might change you know the priorities for the, the Blue Jays at the deadline if if Nate Pearson is you know kind of that high octane back of the the bullpen arm that everyone thinks he can be Scotty with this weather heating up are you shedding gear and dialing up the rollerblades <laughs> well you know what? I got some good news I just got cleared to uh to play basketball the other day from the old torn ACL in my 40s so uh yeah, I'm, I'm debating strapping those blades up, you know, when it's... Uh, you and Jay on right, when, just no when tarps and the, blading. Yeah, when you can pull the tarp off for the first time after a Canadian winter, um, you know, that gets, <laughs> that gets me going these days. Yeah, that Lakeshore is calling it. your name, man. Just cruising down the Lakeshore. I love it, Are Scott. you Harry chess guy, Scotty? Oh, yeah, I trim up, though. I'm, uh, I'm a manscaper. Oh, there you go. Look at you. Shout out. Holy crap. I I love it. That is a veteran (laughs) 700 NHL game experience. Doesn't want to look like a bear. That's what it is. You 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 just got to keep it in check. Like, come on now. I'm not talking, you know, Michael Phelps style. I'm just talking like, you know, just like, like public. Yeah. You're a public figure. You're a public figure, yeah, exactly. Scott. <laughs> People have to know what's up. We love it. All right, buddy. Thanks for doing this. We'll do it again soon. All right. Cheers, fellas. Scott Mitchell, our uh, TSN Jays reporter, joining us here on the Maple Toyota Hotline. Build your next dream Toyota at Maple Toyota. Check out Maple Toyota's pre-owned inventory. Arriving daily, it's time to Toyota. Visit mapletoyota.com. We used to have, I won't say the organization since I played for so many, but there was this – CFO that would come down and he'd do a little workout and he'd do a shower just as the guys would arrive to the rink. So you'd walk in the back and he'd be in the shower and he was a little guy, but he was the hairiest human I've ever seen. And I used to have the line every day, there's a bear in the shower and he'd get so rattled. <laughs> like I would scream it, guys, there's a bear in the shower. And he would get so mad. He hated my guts, which yeah. is fine because I. Is that good for I your constantly, career? He had no nah, power I mean, over that anyway. No, no, he was the numbers guy, but it's still, I used to tease him every day. It was the same joke every day, but I, I loved it. I don't know why. It was an idiotic thing to do, but he was the hairiest human. He had yeah, hair from his eyeballs like, down. If you're a hairy back guy, you would think, I got to get out of here before the fellas show up. <laughs> it was. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. It yeah. was hair well, everywhere. That's where you, you need someone to be honest with you. Like, I saw over the weekend at the Grappler's wedding, you know, like Bic, your head guy, like the guy who takes it down right to the scalp. Oh, yeah, yeah. He missed, like, a massive <laughs> chunk of the back of his right head. Right in the back. He was sitting in you front saw of him. Yeah. We, we were right behind the guy. I'm like, how did someone not go to him and say, dude, you missed a massive pelt on the back of your head? That's why I had to tell Peter Laviolette the first time I met him. I'm like, dude, you got a giant bugger right in your nose. <laughs> then the second time, you're flying low. And it's just, he hated my guts. But you know what? At least I was truthful. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Brad Living coming up. What's he going to be doing during the NHL draft? We've got to get to the bottom of this. And, you know, how does he dispose of the, the whole, you know, attraction of the core four, that dialogue around the city? Is it possible to do it if all the four ba- players are back? And just the whole process of him coming yeah. on board and, and how he sees it playing out. The new GM of the Maple Leafs, Brad Tree Living, he will join us next. All right, Brad Tree Living coming up here in just a moment. He was introduced to the media today, and, you know, he's been doing this a long time. This, uh, He looked, sounded very composed, very comfortable, which is what you would expect. And, right. you know, Dubas, he was introduced to the media down in Pittsburgh, and 
I thought he approached it the same way he did most of his pressers up here, right? Like pretty honest, you know, pretty pretty deeply rooted answers and you know, he spoke about his press conference at the end of the season up here and you know, where he was standing on that cuz a lot of people are pointing to it, you know, 2 weeks later he's already got the job down there, but that's what happens in sports. There's turnover. Right. right. People in Calgary, I'm sure two or three months ago, were thinking Brad's sticking around. Well, he's not. Right. He moved on. Now Craig Conroy's running the show out there. OK, right. let's see what Craig's got. Let's see what Brad brings to Toronto. Kyle, the pit. It's the way it works. Yes, that's the business of this game. I mean, it, guys move around. We talked to Paul McLean. Paul McLean was, you know, assistant coach here. He was head coach in Ottawa. You, you, you end up moving around. But, you know, it's the relationships that you have it's it's the way you treat people and and the success that you have ultimately you're judged by what you do you know everything else is just kind of window dressing that's, that's the way and you know oh you said you know with kyle dubas's tenure five years here they had one playoff round win that's ultimately it you've got to find a way Look to at get gerard gallant it. he was uh, rangers were great last year they almost took tampa out of it this year yeah. he's fired like just yeah. gone yeah. Someone decides that they got to do something different above you. That's just what's going to happen in sports. People move on. Things change. Right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And and ultimately, if you have a, a good foundation, right, if you're built well from the top down, then it doesn't mean the world is going to crumble, right? And I think that's the case here. Like Trey Living said it today. It's like I'm walking into a, a team with a lot of talent and a really good team. Yeah. Lucy's been in the playoffs every year for seven years. Seven straight years, and none of them have really been that debatable. You know, the first year they kind of squeaked in, but they were so young. There was that one year, the last year with Babcock, where it wasn't great, you know, but they were probably going to get in before COVID hit. Uh, but besides that, generally by, like, December, you're like, all right, they're in. They're probably going to get home ice. Let's see what happens, right? Right. So that's a good place to be. You know, Brad's walking in here, and he's got a lot to work with here. Yes, yeah. there's going to be change. Yes, you know, is, is it perfect? No. But no organization is perfect, and it could be a lot worse. Exactly. It could be a lot worse. You could have no budget, no resources, and a bad team. That's yeah. not the case here in Toronto, right? No. If anything, he's got, you know, you're walking into uh, an organization that has more resources, arguably, than anybody in the league. And, you know, you've been – you had 115 points the previous year, 111 last year. We're not worried about the regular season. It's about getting over the hump in the playoffs. So, you know, he's going to be able to sit back and, and take a look. And it might take him some time to get to know the whole organization from top to bottom because he's just effectively starting to work, let's call it today, but right. probably been chipping away the behind the scenes the last week or so. But uh, going to take a little bit from top to bottom to get to know everybody. Sure. Yeah, and that's the that's the nature of the beast as well. You got a big, big organization here, a lot of people working, and including you know Shanahan, the owners, all that good stuff. So here he is. He was introduced uh, officially today as the 18th GM in Maple Leaf history. He's been on the show many times before. This is the first time he's coming on as as a Maple Leaf. Here's Brad Tree Living. Uh, Brad, congratulations. How does it feel to be a Leaf? Well, it feels good. Thanks, Ryan. It's good to it's good to be on. I thought, uh, you know, I know I'm not the A-lister. I know we got noodles and O there. <laughs> Is Kevin in town today? I don't know if Kevin made the show, but it's good to have, good to have me here. Today. <laughs> Kevin's here. Uh, Kevin doesn't miss a show, and Kevin's. Yeah, I'm in a good. Yeah, I'm Kevin. in a good mood. I'm well. I, I'm Berkey, feeling Berkey, good today. Berkey told me Kevin does a good job over there. So I <laughs> yeah. Well, he was. He was. I was touch and go tree if that was going to land or not today. If this guy was in a bad mood, his head was going to pop right off of his body. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, well, good to, good to be on, guys, and uh, and uh, busy day, but uh, exciting. Yeah, no, it's it's great to have you, and and I'm curious, you know, if we go back to to I guess the way it ended in in Calgary, um, was this always your plan, Brad, to kind of get right back into the game, or did it have to be a situation like this that presented itself for you to decide, you know, I'm going to jump back on the bus and and keep running shows, and and it just happens to be here in Toronto. Yeah, there was there certainly was no master plan. It was it was difficult. Um, you know, I loved my time in Calgary, and and you know we just we got to that point and and that we 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 moved on, and uh, you know it, it was 
when you're sort of wired to do this, and then all of a sudden it's like doing the 100 yard dash in an 80 yard gym. It just stops. And uh, and and but I, I'll be honest with you, there was a few days there. It started to you know the stress level was down. You know nobody was really there was no crisis going on and. And I thought this is not too bad. And then there was a there was a help wanted sign by a little coffee shop by where my wife and I go. And when when she was starting to get applications and hand them to me, I thought maybe it was time to get back going. So I was excited when Shani phoned. Um, you know, as I said today, you know, there's all these jobs are are are, are a privilege, and it's a privilege to work in the game and in the league. But you know, there's some that are different, and this is the least. And um, you know, I know you guys hear that a lot here, but when you come from the outside and, you know, we've you, you come into this market, whether it to be play or scout or it's just something different. So um, the opportunity, but the responsibility of, I'm, I'm well aware of. And, and so I was I was excited to get back on the get back on the horse quick. Tree, does it have the big feel? Everyone talks about having that position with the Toronto Maple Leafs, with all due respect to different places you've been throughout the National Hockey League. You sit in your office. You just put the pin on anything. Does it have that big time type feel to it? Hundred percent, no. And and I've heard people throughout my career. And again, I, this is no disrespect to anything. Uh, sure. At all. Um, but you you know it as a player. You I mean you know you go from Carolina to here. And again, there's no disrespect. But going in there today and walking through the room and you see the logo and you look up and you see the pictures. And, um, you know, it, it, it hits you today. I'm usually a guy that doesn't, you know, and my wife will, will confirm there's, you know, you not, I wouldn't be considered a real emotional guy with things like this, but, but this one hit me. And I, I, you know, you think of people today, today I think of the late great Pat Quinn and, and just the people that, um, you know, the people that came before and you see that logo and you see that, you know, the pictures on the wall and the people that have come and the history, it's, it's like I said, it, it hits you and it hits different than anywhere else. And, uh, um, you know, that's real. It's real. So, um, uh, exciting today. Tree, you talked about, um, kind of observing the team with the outside lens. Now that you're going to be behind the curtain and, and seeing everything up close and personal, what is the, I guess, thought process on, on maybe confirming some of the things that you have, whether it's, you know, the talent level, some of the, the character of some of the guys, like, you know, the culture of the group in the room, like are, are these some of the things uh, on your checklist to try and confirm early on in the in in your tenure? Yeah, for sure, Noodles. It's, you, you're trying to – you feel like you're drinking out of the fire hose right now. Um, you know, there's a lot of things to do, but as we go along, it, to me, that's all about building the relationship. Is is, you know, at the end, they, we all know, and and the hockey world knows that this team has got elite level talent, and 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 that's really hard to that's really hard to come by. And I say it all the time. You look at the top top guys, you know, look in in, in this team. Look where they were drafted. Look at the number they were drafted. And that there's pain. There's a lot of pain. Uh, that you have to go through to get those type of players. So they're, they're hard to come by. Uh, we've got lots of talent. Um, now, to me, it's, it's getting to know people. It's getting to know what people tick. It's, it's them getting to know me. It's building those relationships. Once you have those relationships built, then you, you know, and, and there's trust. You can push people, you know, maybe maybe the points that they thought they, they couldn't before. And, you know, the big message for me right now without, without and again, it's easy for me because I'm, I'm I'm coming from the outside and and it's my observations and I was asked today, like, you know I know we hear about the core four and and, and again for me I'm that's a that's a big lure for me to take this job is those are those are some of the best players in the world and it's hard to acquire them and and they it's hard to find them but I look at you know part of how I operate is is I'm fiercely protective of my players. Um, and 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 for those players right now, uh, this isn't about you know we we're not putting all the responsibility at the feet of the core four, and and quite frankly, it's not about four. And I don't I don't want to hear that term. I want to hear this is about the Toronto Maple Leafs. It's not about four guys. It's not about two guys. It's not about five guys. It's about 23, 24, 25 guys that we have in our team. And and you know you treat every you treat everybody fairly, but not everybody equally. There's certain guys. Um, that will that will will ha- will bear more responsibility, 
but this group to achieve what we want to achieve is going to do it collectively. And it's not just by the want and will of one or two or three or four guys. It's going to be the entire group. So that's, that's my early, you know, my early coming in here is, is, you know, whether it rains or, or, or it's sunny, it seems to be, you know, the core force fault every day. Well, let's, you know, let's, 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 let's make sure everybody's engaged. Let's make sure that we've got, um, contributions from everybody and you need that to have ultimate success so to clarify that messaging is that directed to to the other players you know within the room and the coaches or is that directed towards the fans and the media because you know there's so much focus on the core four and if they're all going to be back brad i'm not sure how i don't think you're ever going to eradicate that from a fan perspective like there's Mm -hmm. so much focus on these four guys so is that about the other 19, 20 guys in the room, or is that are, are you directing that message to the to the whole market? Well, it's to the whole market, Brian. Like to me, it's it's and I and I understand that. I understand that there's frustration when a team that everybody wants so badly to achieve the result um, ultimately doesn't. And and what I know is 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 more often than not, there's nobody more disappointed than the players themselves. Um, so. My my job's to come here and help, and uh, but you know my when I say this, it's 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 a belief system for everybody, and I I, I know you're not going to come in here and 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 change a you know, whether it be a narrative or or a thought process just by making a statement. But to me, this is that's what we're going to keep coming drumming home with our group, both inside and out. Is this is this is about the lease. This is about this is about the team. This is about you know, our group. And uh, we're so fortunate to have some top end talent, but we, we, it's about, it's about 23, it's about 23, 24 guys. And uh, uh, my, my job's not to change a narrative just by words. It's uh, all of us to change whatever narratives are out there by actions. And that's what we're trying to do. How different is it to have an idea or let's say you're having a beer with somebody throughout a regular season and you just make a comment about a team like that team can't win or they need to do this before they can win. And then you're running a different team and then you have to put some of those thoughts into action with a salary cap Mm -hmm. and how difficult that is, Brad, just talk about that experience where, I mean, you knew what the Toronto Maple Leafs were and now you got to put some of those thoughts you had before into action. Absolutely, great question. Oh, it's 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 exciting to me, <clears throat> you know. Because again, we all—I've always said, you know—we we all manage everybody else's team better than us. We I mean, we always talk to each other. I can fix your team. I mean, I mean never mind mine, but I got all I got all the answers. <laughs> right. Um, and uh, right. And uh, so to me, it's exciting. It comes back to the talent level that's here. And you know, the one thing I keep coming back to, and again, I I know I know there's the, you, we get frustrated, but. Again, then you guys played, you know, um, you know, at the end of the day, these guys are, you know, I know John's been around in the league a long time, but you look at Austin, you look at, you look at William and we, you look at Mitch and, and these are still, these are still young men. You know, they're just still coming into their, you know, own physically. I mean, they're, they're, that's, that's, you know, I was talking to Brendan today and I think, I think he was like 28 or 29 when he won his first cup. Um, and you can go throughout, and, and certainly other other people that do it at an early age, sure. But you you go back in in history, you go back whether it be our league or other leagues. And you know, I I'm a firm believer um, that you have to build it properly. Um, and then once you've built it properly, you you continue to tweak, you continue to tweak. But you've got to have multiple opportunities. You, you know, you got to be back at the table year after year and knocking on the door and knocking on the door and knocking on the door. And you know, we were talking today. Um, in a lot of ways, again, here's the here's the outsider talking about it. You know, when I talked to Shani and I you know, watched the playoffs, and I remember we were we were playing in Dallas last year in our first round, and we you know we were on the off day of the Leaf. Um, Tampa series. I, th- I thought collectively, Toronto played a better series last year against Tampa Bay and lost than they did this year and won. And you know, so there's 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 you know events that happen. There's some randomness. There's a luck. There's a you know there's a puck that hits the post and goes in, and and the next year it hits the post and goes out. So you know we got a final. Florida's done a hell of a job. 
they're they're a Pittsburgh loss to Chicago away from not making the playoffs, right? So so and I bring all these things up of saying if we can keep we keep knocking on the door, you keep knocking on the door, you keep you make sure you're good enough to be there and give yourself a chance every time, every year on a consistent basis, tweak the areas that you can tweak, then eventually it's not guaranteed, but your hope is that when the luck is supposed to go your way, it goes your way. When the bounce is supposed to happen, you're there again. We're back here again. We're back here again. And that's what we have to keep in mind when I know there's lots of frustration. When I know it feels like, oh, we've been here before and we can't get it done. So we continue to look at everything to try to make ourselves better. But um, you have to you have to put yourself to, in a position each year to, to hopefully, you know, not only knock through the door, but but knock it down, and and that's that's what we tend to do. With Brad Trey Living, new GM of the Maple Leafs, uh, you you inherit a coach here in in Sheldon Keefe. Um, <laughs> is he does he have to pitch himself to you? Like, how does this work, Brad? And and how is that process going to work out? Your evaluation of of a coach who's who's still here, and and you're the new guy on the block. Yeah, and I think it's. I mean, we're all big boys here. There's no sense. You know, and I've talked to I've talked to, to Sheldon about it. It's a unique situation. Maybe there's some uncomfortability, but you know that's that's what happens in the business here. You know, we it, we we get lots of you know we we're, we're, we we get lots of great things <clears throat> as a result of being involved in the league. And sometimes, you know what, there's things that may be a little uncomfortable. So we're gonna we're gonna go through the process here. I look at Sheldon, and I've told him, <clears throat> you know, I'm not coming in with any preconceived notions. I know the old. Right, it's it's out of the GM handbook. Number one, GM, you know, new GM comes in, got to bring his own guy. Right. Well, it's sort of like saying, well, I just got to go trade a guy for the sake of trading guy. Right. If it's not making your team better, I, I you know, you can. It's easy to make a bad deal, um, and you can do that any day of the week. Right. Um, I look at I, so I come in here and I say, okay, I look at Sheldon's record, pretty good record. Um, you know, what has he been? Last two regular season, 115, 111 points. Um, we haven't had playoff success. We, we haven't had playoff success. Okay, so Sheldon's, you know, what has he been? Had four years in the league, five years in the league. He's a younger coach. Um, <clears throat> you know, then you sit here and say, um, you know, to me, Sheldon, if Sheldon Keith is a is on the market right now, he, he's at or near the top of of any of these opening vacancies. So we got to go through this process and not just because Brad's coming in and Sheldon's here and Brad didn't hire Sheldon. Um, I just don't think it's proper that you have to go bring in your own guy. If the best guy for the job is the guy that's sitting here. So that's the process we're going to go through. Um, I'm really excited to get to know him. Um, we, we, we've got to move through this quickly. We understand where we are from the calendar, but we're going to be pragmatic. We're going to be thorough. Um, and we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna you know go pedal down here and move through things as quick as we can. But um, I, like I said, I, I just I'm coming in with no master plan other than we want to we want to get the very best coach uh, for this team, and 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 I think we got a pretty damn good coach in place right now. Let's let's just see how things go. Tree, before we get you out of here, we had an argument earlier about the the draft situation. Like, what is it? we we. I, from your view, clarification: Do you sit with a beard and a mustache on the side, and you know, do the Bobby Valentine trying to sneak onto the the draft floor? Like, what what are you allowed to do? What are you not allowed to do? Because we had a spirited argument before you came on. Well, right now, and that's probably a better a better question for for Brendan. Um, I know there's been some restrictions. We'll 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 try to clarify. I think in the coming days, what those are. Um, and whatever they are, they are. And, and, and um, I've got full faith in, in the, you know, the staff here um, in terms of their preparation for the draft. And, you know, those things, I know everybody's sitting there going, well, just the draft is coming up and the manager has been, you know, Wes Clark, who, who I think does a good job and his, his staff, have, they're prepared for the draft. Um, so we'll see what's going on and, you know, if we have to bring up the, you know, the fake afro and, uh, <laughs> and uh, you know, the rubber gloves, we, we will. But hopefully uh, hopefully that can get straightened around or get clarif- clarified here in the coming days. Yeah, you would. I mean, because, uh, like, as of today, you don't have to recuse yourself, do you? Like, if there's draft conversations, are you allowed to be in the room if there was a meeting at 6 with Wes and his team? Well, we haven't had those yet. I'm, I'm going to – I've been uh, – 
Well, I've been sort of doing the circuit here today, so I'm going to sit with Brendan, and I know he's going to have hopefully some clarification here um, once we get going tomorrow. Okay. Hashtag get Brad on the draft floor. Get him on the <laughs> get on the get on that floor. Right? It's got to happen. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, yeah. congrats on the on the gig, and you know, welcome to Toronto, and and uh, it's it's going to be a fun ride. So, best of luck with it, and thank you for doing this. I appreciate it, fellas. Good talking. We'll see you soon. You got it, Brad Tree Living. New GM of the Leafs. Sounds like he's kind of hoping cooler heads prevail a little bit, right? Like Shanahan, the Flames, they'll figure it out. But I don't know. Well, As of now, yeah. it is what it is. Yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah. You guys are good? Go. Or, okay. Yeah, no, I got to go. Sorry. Yeah, no we got to fly. That's what they're. No, I got to Okay, <laughs> sure. Um, all right. More on that. We'll recap. Overdrive continues. TSN 1050 and on TSN 2. All right. Thanks again to Brad Trilliving for coming on. Um, you know, we asked him about Sheldon Keefe, and he's going to evaluate that process, right? Like, it, it's not a definitive answer. What's interesting, though, is Dubas is going down there, and he has no option with the coach. Right. Like, Mike Sullivan ain't going anywhere. No, and, sir. Which is really interesting that Dubas, you know, is in a different spot. He's got more power, a bigger title. Yet, yeah, when it comes to the coach and the core players, you're not doing anything. Sid's not going anywhere. Gino's not going anywhere. Sullivan's not going anywhere. It's kind of interesting. Yeah. Um, you know, we'll see what – he's going to be working around the perimeter. right? Yeah. Sullivan's one of those coaches is. that <laughs> he's he's basically an assistant GM slash coach. Yeah, he's yeah. well, he was part of the <laughs> search proj- process. Exactly. So. Exactly. Kind of feels like Babcock right. when Dubas fo- first got the gig. You know, exactly. Uh, final hour coming up. Overdrive continues. TSN 1050 and on the TSN app.